sound. Are we okay in the back? It's a big room, so I want to make sure it travels. We're in an airplane. All right. Okay. I guess we'll we'll get started here. Got more people coming in. Welcome. Welcome back. All right. A uh, couple of things that, if, in case you have not figured out, if you're new here, uh, the drink situation, if you like a drink or a snack, uh, get out. <laughs> Literally, get out, come back. Um, so uh, that's the situation. And uh, I'm sure you can find other things from people in the alley, too. I'm not looking at anybody in particular. Welcome. Come on in. All right. Now, a couple of things I, I want to go over. This is the, the first edition of Penny University. This is a, a project that I've wanted to do for a really long time. And uh, I want to kind of give you some info and some backstory to explain what I'm hoping to accomplish uh, here uh, here tonight. Welcome. I don't, are there uh, extra chairs you want to grab? Help yourself? All right. Um, so... Uh, Penny University, if you're not aware of the name, is uh, actually very cool, but essentially in the 18th uh, and 19th century in England, uh, Penny Universities were coffee shops, and uh, they were called uh, Penny Universities because you could go for a penny and meet with other people, and you could uh, lecture and have, have conversations and, and learn something uh, at a cheap, obviously very, very cheaply. Uh, so, <clears throat> the, uh, I went and I discovered the name over 20 years ago at a coffee shop uh, back in Florida called Penny University. And Penny, and when I was at university, uh, we used to go there every Wednesday night and we, they would have spoken word nights like we're doing tonight where essentially they had a microphone, a stage, and anyone could go up and tell a story could read a poem, or you could just go up and, and rant. There was one guy named Tim who would just kind of go up and scream at people for 10 minutes. <laughs> he was kind of going through a lot, uh, but it clearly it was his way of, of getting through life. And it was just really cool, and it was a very comfortable and, and uh, cozy environment, uh, and the coffee was good, and the people were great. And it was my first experience being on stage my first experience uh, uh, trying to entertain people, and it was, I think, very, very crucial in my development uh, as uh, someone who does uh, performance on stage now. Uh, how you doing? I just, welcome back. So, so Pen I wanted to bring the same, the same concept here, and it took me a long time to find a place that matched what I was hoping for, and I found this wonderful place, which is I thought very cozy, very nice, have a lot of personality, and uh, and 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 I'm very happy that I packed the place, which you know not okay. But anyways, but the point is is that um, <clears throat> the point is is that oh thank you. So and thank you for being here uh, for this experiment, and hopefully this will be the first of many uh, that we can do uh, here. Uh, but a couple things I wanna go over that I feel are, are, are worth mentioning, all right? Uh, also, I just wanna share my commitment to Penny University, making it every Wednesday night was a big deal. It was an hour drive to get there from, from my home. And uh, in 1995, in August, we had Hurricane Aaron, which came right across Florida, we went right over Miami, and then came to Tampa and I drove through the hurricane. And in, in hindsight, it was a really stupid idea, uh, but now it's like a funny story, but literally we were on the bridge with waves coming up on the bridge where you could not even see the road. So my commitment to Penny University was very strong and, uh, and very important. Now, a couple of things about Penny University worth mentioning. If tonight, you, anyone, and some of you have already signed the list, Anyone is allowed to come up here and tell a story. Now, that story could be something you have written, it could be fiction, it could be true, um, it could be funny, it could be sad. There's no commitment like an open mic to make people laugh, all right? The point is that you can be comfortable to share a story. 
Now, you can come prepared, and some of you have, or you could take the challenge. I have a bag up here, which essentially is full of about 300 questions. Some of them are would you rather questions. Would you rather like, which you're given two impossible choices and you have to pick one. For instance, would you rather have every email you've ever written published, or would you rather have every SMS you've ever written published? You have to pick one, all right? <clears throat> would you rather watch your parents have sex, or have your parents watch you have sex? <laughs> you can answer that later. <clears throat> so anyways, questions like that, but there's also other questions about memories, your, uh, your favorite moment, stuff like that, something that might inspire a story from you. So you can take the challenge and come up here and just pick a question, and if it works for you, you can tell a story, all right? Also, um, if you come up and you tell a story, I, I run uh, NSFW, which is not safe for Wrocław. I run events uh, like this one uh, and here and many other different places uh, where I do comedy shows and different kinds of events. If you come up here, I will give you one ticket to any NSFW show, which is worth about 10 or 15 zwati, depending on the show, and you'll be, you can come to see one of those shows for free the next time I have them, all right? But the next one, I believe, is in November, all right? So you get a free ticket for that, and <clears throat> at Penny University back in the day, starting in uh, May 5th of 1995, I bought this book, and I brought it to Penny University at that coffee shop, and I passed it around, and I had people write down their thoughts, their whatever they were feeling in the book. And the book is almost halfway done. And now, 22 years later, I'm hoping to start finishing it. So the book will go around the room, and you're welcome to add, write down anything you want, you know, anything you, that strikes your, your fancy. You have a, a story to tell, or a thought you want to write, or a deep thought you'd like to share. You got the book, which will be going around, and I encourage you to, to, fill, it, to fill it out. All right? So, and I think, I think that's it. Oh, and also, of course, the most important part is the sign-up list. So, if you like what you're seeing, if, you're, if, you're, if the mood strikes you, if you have a couple more beers, <laughs> all right, you're welcome to come up and tell a story. Just, you know, ask, sign, and, uh, and of course, depending on time, too, you might even have the opportunity to come up uh, more than once. So... Uh, before we bring up the first person, um, one final thing I'll share with you, which is worth, <laughs> worth mentioning. Um, when I went to Penny University at the time, I thought I was going to become a poet. I was an English major, and I was writing lots of poetry, uh, which at the time I thought made a lot of sense for me. I thought it would be a lucrative career and become a poet. And so <clears throat> what I did if I actually found a few of my poems from Penn University, and I'm going to share some of the poems that I read back then. Uh, I'm not proud of this, but it's also important to know where I'm coming from, and it's important to understand that you can come up here and, and be yourself. So my first poem, which I have not read on stage, in over 20 years, for a reason, uh, is called Bertha, My Secret Love Cow. Follow me, please read that to you now. Oh Bertha, my secret love cow, don't ask me how, but I love you, I do. Your body tasted like milk. Hey, not funny. Your eyes so pure, your utters like silk, your scent of manure. I show you my love, my sacred emotion, every night when the sun goes down and my folks go out of town. Oh, Bertha, my bovine friend, I see you hiding around the bend, in the back by the haystack. You were waiting for me, weren't you? Oh, Bertha, you don't cuss, you don't lie, you don't fuss, you don't die like them chickens did. Move for me, baby, one more time. In some states, my love is a crime. 
But does it matter when I'm rubbing your bladder? Let's do it again, Bertha, for tonight is our anniversary. Remember when Pa was th thinking about taking you to a nursery? If only he could hear our nightly cries. If only he knew why your calf has my eyes. I know our love is whole, never skim. Our love is beyond reality, beyond most dairy products. I love it when you take charge and you sit on me. You're so large, I think you're gonna kill me. <laughs> but then you moo in that special way and push me into the hay. Oh, Bertha, our love is brittle like a leaf because whether I like it or not, you're just beef. <laughs> oh, Bertha, tomorrow you're going to the slaughterhouse. Yes, I know, and I'm sorry. Tomorrow our love will be no more but it will feed a family of four. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I didn't read it beforehand. I wanted to go in cold. Now I'm, I'm, I regret that. <laughs> yeah. um, one, one more poem. As you can tell, I wasn't very good at this. And, um, but this one is, uh, uh, Bob, and I uh, don't have a name, Micah, um, but this is another one. Bob, being beepless, bought a beeper. Bravo, Bob brings his beeper everywhere. But nobody beeped Bob's beeper, thus beepless was Bob still. Bob, being bombastic, beeped himself all night long. Beep, 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 his beeper was not cheap, cheap, cheap. Bob met Betty. Betty beeped Bob for breakfast. Hooray! Betty brought bacon and bagels. Betty buys a beeper. Bob beat Betty. Betty beat Bob. But Bob found out Betty beeped other boys. Beep, beep, beep. Betty was a creep, creep, creep. Bob made a bunch of friends. Yippee, they beeped Bob. Bob beeper, beeper's batteries lasted barely a week as it beeped its beeps, bringing Bob to de-beep his beeper. Beep, beep, beep. Bob beeper never did sleep, sleep, sleep. Bill, Bob Buddy, beat Bob. Yowzers, Bingo, Bill Beagle, barked at Bob Beeper. Bob begged Bingo to be quiet, but Bob buried Bingo in the backyard instead. Bill doesn't beep Bob anymore. Beep, beep, beep. This poem is not deep, deep, deep. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, the point is, anybody can do this. All right? Anybody. Doesn't take any talent whatsoever. Hello. Hi. Hi, we've been waiting for you. I know. So come on and have a seat. <laughs> All right. So I want to bring up uh, the, our first guest. Uh, she, she actually uh, contacted me, and uh, I'm an idiot because I, I did not ask her the pronunciation of her name. It, sh uh, Shima? That's perfect. Is it perfect? Yeah. For real? I grew up in Holland. Everybody can oh, say my name the way they like. All right. Well, I, I apologize. <laughs> Fine. Me to wait. Uh, well, anyway, uh, she contacted me, and uh, and she's going to come up and uh, read us a, a selection uh, from her work. Uh, so everyone, please, uh, you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Ready? Yes. Please give a warm hand to <laughs> Sheila. nervous this is my first time on stage performing my work um, my boyfriend this morning said to me that I'm way too romantic <laughs> so <laughs> I hope you guys are going to be more nicer to me than he was um, the poem is called uh, the rain doesn't require words the rain is quiet as she visits the street she silently bows toward the trees wets them with her tears makes them feel her care. The rain doesn't require words to be understood. Her interactions all come natural to nature. It's unlike us. We need agreed upon expressions for everything we do. We need a destination articulated in goals in order to stay on the long road ahead. We require purpose so not to lose control over the wheel when, we, when the rain crashes against our windshield 
violently. We disappear in the ideas we chase down life's slippery, curly, unpaved highway. We snooze our own savage desires, forgot the ones who have held our heart in their innocent palms. It's unfair to be human, like the mud it sticks to the river. There's too much distraction in the online and offline world. Would the peacock ever imagine talking to the ox, I wonder? Would the snake feel regret for biting the monkey? I never understood where to stand in a crowd. My first instinct is to lay still on the wet grass in the corner of a garden. Biting into the apple's white flesh reminds me how I won't get, pa how I won't get back time spent. I'm a graduate and still lost in the schoolyard. It's too late to question anything anymore. When we grow old, you will tell me it was all foregone conclusions anyway. Unwilling to move beyond myself, I lay still in bed today. For nothing the sun comes up, we say. I say the sun also doesn't want to be alone after the dark night has come and gone. Nothing can make me forget what I remember. Even the Adderall is without voodoo power. But he made me stop questioning whether I was alone. I am the secret he wanted to unwrap and honestly I wanted to twirl, making it easier for him. But the wrapping paper around my body is a never ending synonym for a comparison he couldn't bring himself to make. Sincerely, I'm too dehydrated to not drink the bourbon that spills from his lips when he goes to tell me something honest. But he's too drunk and he chokes up in a moment. And I stay behind, still just a synonym, never a complete sentence. You and I were never to be taken literally. We are just the emotion remaining after finishing a Kazu Ishiguro book. We are the ending moment of a day that we never thought we could belong at. We explored out onto the sea unprepared, forget that there is no compass built in on this weak body of ours. Loneliness is the only thing you and I ever truly understood how to navigate, allowing the suffocating waves to swallow us into their little pockets of silence was like paradise to us. I don't need to come up for air, I can breathe underwater by remembering who I used to be. Nothing will be passed down to me from a world that can't see me. The little boat we are on will sink. You and I are too morally burdened to surrender and too weak to fight. You and I are not fighters. We are lovers. Neither are we scientists, even though we subscribe to the idea of science. Nevertheless, we lack the ability to distillate love from the howling wind. So we run. And we run and we hide, hoping the sun won't find us, won't torture us for answers we can't articulate. Nothing has an ending that we crave. It's just a hiding part we are familiar with. We know we will wither away. That's our way. We don't fight and we don't lose. But we also won't gain anything new. You and I are leaves of a tree that has already died in the winter. Somehow we are still alive lying here on the streets. But you and I know the secret to the lie we tell each other. You and I realize we turned out to be the criminal. You and I realize we turned out to be the criminals in the play we wrote. You and I know crystal clear we will never fight for you and I. Because you and I are not fighters. We would have been the jesters of the court. With weak bodies, we curl up into each other when it gets below bearable. You and I remorse the love we never got and never learned how to give. And you and I will never learn how to grow into a tree. Bird branches that try their best to reach the sky, knock on doors, walk in fearless, walk in fearless. No. You and I will lay here on the street till someone decides to pick us up. 
That's the only ending conceivable to the story of you and I. The beginning we got was never a fair one, Adam. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Shima. Great.